Hey guys, Comet here. Welcome to episode 10 in my Overly Scienced series. In the last episode, we built this Bristle Blossom farm over here. It also has some mealwood and mushrooms, or dust caps as they're called in the game. And I also have some thimble reeds just to get rid of some extra polluted water if I need to. Now I also cored out the entire map, uh, except for the subsurface ocean up here, and I've uncovered a couple of vents. So this is a chlorine vent here. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with this. If gassy moos were breedable, it would give chlorine a really good use in the game, but as of right now, it's pretty much only used for decontamination. You can harvest gassy moos from space, and then they die off after 100 cycles. You can't breed them like you can other critters. But what's nice about them is that you can use chlorine to fertilize gas grass, and then the gassy moos will eat the gas grass and give off natural gas. And natural gas can be used for power. So you can essentially turn chlorine into power using gassy moos. And if they were breedable, this would be a viable strategy for power in the late game, but they're not. So really, chlorine gas vents don't have a purpose. I may deconstruct this if I can't find a use for it. Now this geyser right here, I'm pretty sure is a volcano. So if I do uh, do something with this, it'll be exactly what I built here, because I can just copy paste this on any volcano. This right here is a infectious polluted oxygen vent, which I will probably use for ceramic in conjunction with this down here. I'm pretty sure this is also a polluted oxygen vent. I don't know if it's infectious or just a hot polluted oxygen vent. But what I want to accomplish in this episode is digging up through right here and trying to get into space up here. I want to get my first rocket set up and start doing some interstellar research here. So to do that, I'm just going to put a ladder up like this. So confirmed, this is a copper volcano. I'm now working on taming this. I'm pulling a vacuum here. I'm just gonna connect this up to get some water over here. All right, this is now a vacuum, so I'm going to seal this up because I need to quickly put an atmosphere back in here so this doesn't overheat. And I'm going to do that by running a bridge of hydrogen here, all the way up to here. And I can put the steam turbine in in the same spot. This is just the exact same design as the gold volcano. I think this is enough water for now, so I'll go ahead and cut that. Alright, here comes the hydrogen, just in time to keep this from overheating. Now the only thing left to do is dig this up, analyze this, and close this off. Uh-oh, it's about to erupt with Marie here. I think it should be okay though, because it can't melt the steel, and it can't melt the diamond. And hopefully it doesn't turn any of this water into steam. I mean, that wouldn't be the end of the world, it would just pool into water over here. Okay, she's done. I can seal that up now. And then I also need to get some water over here as the coolant. And I have this set to work when it's above 14 degrees Celsius. Here comes the water. And this will help flash the water in here into steam. Alright, that line looks full, so I'm going to go ahead and deconstruct this. And of course, I finish all of this with two cycles left, so we're not going to get much copper out of it. But now I can focus on how I'm going to get into space. I don't want to just lose all of my hydrogen here, so I think I'm going to make a liquid lock right here, and then have a second ladder that goes up right here. So this should work as a liquid lock here, preventing all of the gases down here in my base from leaking out into space. I'm actually going to move the bottle emptier from this side over to this side because I want crude oil in this spot right here because when they dig up this way, uh, some of this regolith 
or regolith right here, is going to fall down, and it's going to displace this crude oil and break my lock. So I need crude oil on this side right here to keep the lock intact. Now I'm going to keep building this ladder up to the top. Uh, it looks like we're actually, yeah, right there. That's the top. Normally what I do is I put my bunker doors right here at the very top. But what I think I'm going to do in this playthrough is put my bunker doors down a couple tiles. That way I can accumulate more regolith between showers. Because I plan on using that regolith in a regolith melter for massive amounts of power. Because the difference in specific heat capacity between regolith and igneous rock. And I'll link a video by Tony Advanced. This is where I got the idea from where he goes in and builds a really good uh, regolith melter. Now obviously I'm going to make some tweaks to it like I've done with all of my past designs. And on the map where I have one actually working, um, I noticed I was running out of regolith if I have my bunker doors right here. So that's why I think I'm going to drop it down a couple tiles just to make sure I have enough regolith to keep it running. Now these bunker doors cost a lot of steel and I only have three tons of it. So I'm going to have to queue up a lot of... Oh, I'm out of refined carbon. Okay, I can fix that. Right here, let's cancel that and get some... Oh, 20. Get some refined carbon going here. So what I'm going to do for now to protect this ladder is I'm going to put bunker tiles instead of bunker doors uh, down two blocks from the very top. So one, two right here. So there's the two block gap for regolith to accumulate. It'll accumulate up to that that height right there. And the reason I'm putting tiles instead of doors is because I put my doors at very specific places and I haven't quite mapped it out yet. I need to dig across to the edge over here and then I can work backwards and place my doors across the top. Uh, but I don't know where I am right now relative to the edge, so I'm going to have to wait. But I need something to protect my dupes as they build across, so I'm just going to put in these tiles for now. And since there is four tiles here for the regolith to accumulate, I need to... One, two, three, four. This would be where the uh, floor would go, where the regolith would then drop down once the door is open. And I have the four tiles here for the regolith to fit in. But I want my dupes to be able to run across the top. And my dupes are two blocks tall. So I'm going to move this down two more blocks right here. So this would be the very bottom of my whole robo miner setup here. And then I think I'll also just run a ladder across to here like this. The other thing I want to do is clean up this center part right here so that I can continue the transit tube all the way up to the top. So I'm just going to deconstruct everything here, not really caring what's in the middle. I'm going to put this ladder up this way. And I'm going to continue the tube up this way as well. I gotta get rid of these ladder segments here, because they're in the way of the tube. And then I can put in the platforms for the transit tube access. Now the power can go straight through and up to this one. And I can get rid of this little kink here. Now the other thing I need to do is redirect this polluted water over into the thimble reeds over here. So I'm going to try something like this. Now the petroleum will have to jump over that, and then the polluted water will have to jump over here. So I'm going to deconstruct that. direct the polluted water down and over here and I gotta flip this bridge and 
make it go that way. Which means I can also then get rid of all of this stuff up here. So these thimble reeds aren't needed anymore. And I kind of need them to hurry on this because it's plugged up my bathrooms. If you notice here. Alright, so these should be emptying out now. Yep, there it goes. And these are operational again. And this polluted water doesn't want to move down because of this bridge here, so let's get rid of that. And then all of this piping up here is unnecessary as well. Yeah, we'll just get rid of all of it. Oh. Oh, this is full. Uh, so that means I can... If this is full, then I can bypass all of the... Water sieves by doing something like this. I can bridge over that and then put the polluted water up this way. And just join into there. Yeah, these should not be working. They're completely flooded. I think because they were slowly flooded, uh, because these give off so little water, the water level raised so incrementally that these didn't register that they were flooded. Well, that's kind of interesting. Building broken. Oh, okay. We're just having a meteor shower. I need them to finish this. Let's do priority 7. That way they don't have to go back up here and keep repairing things. Oh, and it's breaking stuff down here too. Okay, we need to extend this out then. So priority 7, and then priority 6. Now, this is starting to empty here. And all of that polluted water is going up this way and into the thimble reeds up here, which I will eventually turn into insulation. This thing that I built, uh, I think last episode, is backed up now. The water, all of these water tanks are full, so I'm going to start pulling from this. And have this be the primary water source instead of this tank up here because it's all contaminated with salt water anyway so I'm going to just open up the walls and let it all empty out down into the bottom where it's going to be picked up by this pump and set into these tanks anyway and that's kind of a problem there. If this is flooded, these aren't going to have any power. This should drain in time. I think we're okay. Yeah, it's back online. And it looks like they're not building this, and we're running out of water. I need to change the priority on this. Alright, here we go. Now the water's moving. And it will fill up this empty loop here. Since this volcano's been running for a long time, I've got quite a bit of gold. So what I'm going to do is deconstruct all of these statues and replace them with gold metal blocks. I also think I should connect this polluted water up to the thimble reeds as well. So I'm going to... Try and finagle it through here. Let's see. Can go up here and then down that way. And I should be able to just use the output pipe right here from the carbon skimmer and run it through the base here. And that will empty all of these tanks here. 
Let's see, we're still plugged up because of the water. I'm almost consuming a full 10 kilograms a second. Once I get hydrogen rockets up and running, uh, I'll be using a lot more water. But that's not for a long time still. Haven't even launched the first steam rocket. Okay, having these poke shells in the base here is probably a really bad idea. They got in because of this, this part right here. So what I need to do is set up a critter drop-off here. Not floating in the air. How about right here? And I don't think anyone has critter ranching yet, so I need to find someone that is interested in critter ranching. Oh, that's my cook. There we go. Bonnie will work. Critter ranching. There you go. Let me go to priorities and make sure Bonnie ranching is already set. Okay. Because if one of these lays an egg, uh, the dupes are going to get smacked on their way by. Since this is the most trafficked area, these are the worst place possible for these poke shells. And then hopefully someone comes by and picks these guys up. It might not work because... Uh, we're storing 37 out of 20 already. I think I need to put it in a blocked off room. So, let me deconstruct this. Put a mesh tile on top. I like this. And then I'll put some doors on the sides like this. And that'll put it in its own room. That way the critters roaming around the map won't interfere with it. Yeah, this one was able to break free, and that one just broke free right now, too. Alright, now it's storing 0 out of 20, so I'm going to try this again. Wrangle those. Yes, here we go. Now they're dropping them off. Alright, now I can go ahead and just get rid of this. It's not necessary. And these are idle. I switched them off and never switched them back on. Copy that over there. Oh dear. We are about to run out of petroleum. This is bad. So I had to turn off uh, these oil wells, or I guess break them open, because when the water flooded in here, it messed with the hydro sensors, and so these just kept working, and then it blew out the bottom of here because it became overpressurized. Uh, same with this one, it started squirting out of the top. So I need to start using the ones that are higher up for my oil. So I'm just gonna copy this design and paste it here, and also over here. And hopefully we don't run out of petroleum before- oh, we did. Oh dear. This is why you always have your coal as backup for situations like these. So this design is good against falling water, because it can't go down here and break this liquid lock, but it can't really do anything against water coming up from underneath and getting inside. The other thing I should probably do is get this carbon dioxide cloud under control. It's been slowly creeping up the map here. I think I'm just going to set up some carbon skimmers right here. Four should be enough. Let me see here. Uh, for plumbing, I'll just run the water straight across here. And then the polluted water will have to jump across and go onto this line here. So I'll do something like this. Put a bridge here on the water. Deconstruct that. And then I can bridge over the petroleum like this. And then for power, I can just drag it across this way. And then these should clean up a lot of this carbon dioxide. Now that I have a liquid lock here, I can go ahead and connect this gas pipe up to here. So we should be getting some crude oil in, which is converted to petroleum. And these should start running again, because I'm out of power. If you can see this here. Power is starting to stabilize now. I have some charge in these batteries. I've got uh, this oil well and this oil well working now. Then I've also queued up some stuff to get this one working, just as backup. The next major thing I need to do is cap off this 
steam vent and this steam vent and then have them output water instead of steam but I really need to have uh, super coolant to do that it's just too inefficient to use water and then that will stop all of this rain which will allow this pump down here to catch up and empty out all of the liquids down at the bottom here which would then allow me to start using this and this again but that's probably going to be in the distant future because there's a lot of water down here while all of that has been going on down at the bottom uh, my dupes have finished well almost finished this up here I just need to extend this ladder over actually to help my power problem I think what I'm going to do I just noticed that there's a natural gas geyser right here so I'm going to break into here and pump some of this over into here just to help with my power problem all right, this has been capped off now. I'm going to set this to work when it is above... Oh, 1,000? 1,000 grams? We've got about 20 more cycles left in this geyser here. And that should supplement my power over here. All right, we're just about to make it to the edge here. And what I like to do is cap that off like that. I actually make this uh, four tiles thick here. Because then it lines up with the neutronium right here. The neutronium here is four tiles. And same on the other side. Oop. Don't, don't dig up neutronium. Your dupes will be there forever. That just makes a nice clean edge on both sides for the rockets. So now that I know where the edge is, I can go ahead and put in the doors. So this is four tiles right here. So on the fourth tile, I'm going to break out four tiles. And that will be the first door. Just like that. Now each rocket will need two doors. So I'm going to break out another four tiles right here. If my dupes will come along and do this for me. Here they come. For some reason, when you repair mesh tiles, you end up with a piece of debris stuck in the tile. I think when you reload the game, it will pop back up to the top. But that's kind of annoying when you're building a room, and then you seal it off, and then when you load back in, that, that debris pops up inside of the room, and then you have to break back in. So just a heads up on that. The rocket is only seven tiles wide, so to keep Regolith from falling back down, I can put either a tile here. All right, let me pause this so my dupes don't come over and build it. So I can have the seven tiles here for the rocket, or I can put it here and have the seven tiles here. And I think what I'm going to do is put, put it right here. And then uh, the next rocket could theoretically go right up against it here. So let me deconstruct eight here. So the way I normally do my space setup, I have uh, two rockets on each side. So that would be one, two, and then three, four over there somewhere. I have my liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen set up uh, close to the rockets. So each side would have its own little unit. And then closer to the center is where I plan on... Oh, that's not good. Why are we making messes? The polluted water is backed up. Body temperature. Are we too cold? We're too cold. Let's bump it up to 26. Okay, I need a way to get rid of this water now. Uh, I guess for now, I'll just put a vent right here. That's very inelegant, but that's all I can do at the moment. I guess I could put a reservoir. Okay, temporary fix for now. I'm just going to put some reservoirs right here, and then pipe it back up to there. So, I'm going to cancel that, and priority now this 
Oh, it's because the water I'm sending in is too cold. That has never been a problem. Yeah, I don't have a way to heat this back up. I only have a way of cooling it off. Okay, that means I need to stop... I need to stop this polluted water then. And now I have to mop up all the messes they made here. So the steam engine, or the steam rocket I'm going to build here is going to have a command capsule, six research modules, and then one steam engine. So that is a total of eight, eight modules here. And each one is five blocks tall. So five times eight, that's gonna be 40. I need to come down 40 blocks here. I'm gonna dig this out. Just like that. And then start construction on the rocket down here. So the first rocket is going to go right here. Now the gantries can reach all the way to the center of the rocket before it takes damage from the thruster down at the bottom. So if you were to put it here, it would take damage when the rocket goes past. But if you put it right here so that the, the tip is in the very center block of the rocket, then you'll be fine. So that means that the ladder for this gantry is gonna have to go right here. So I'll put this up right here. And all of this, this stuff right here is going to be temporary. I'm eventually going to switch out to uh, petroleum and then hydrogen rockets, and then I'm going to have individual silos for the rockets without all of these gantries here. And the reason I'm putting six research modules instead of... I don't even have access to the star map yet. I'll go ahead and put in a telescope right here, which means I need to get power over. Power, and I'm going to make this out of iron because this regolith is hot enough to melt the lead. And then at this point I can switch back to lead. I'm also going to need to get some oxygen up here. I think I can steal some from right here. So I'll just connect it up like that, and then anything that uh, can't go through this bridge here will just go up into the telescope. Okay, now that there is power and oxygen into the telescope, and the rocket is built, I'm going to go about this uh, very brute forcefully. I'm not going to put in any fancy automation yet, because this is all temporary. I'm going to open up the skies right here, and then just repair the telescope if it gets damaged. I want to just uh, do the first research on this planet, so that I can explain why I have six research modules here. Okay, I have access to the sky now, so I'm going to... Uh, okay, that's already selected. I just need to wait for... I think Marie is my researcher. Let me just increase the priority on that. Alright, so Marie is going to do some research here. And now that I have access to the star map, you can see here, the research modules, there's going to be one, two, three, four, five would be all I would need to fully research this asteroid. But if I only sent five modules uh, per trip instead of six, then after two asteroids, because of a rounding error, I would be super close to... Uh, let me build some research stations here so I can show that as well. Okay, now that I have these in place, if I go to research here, this yellow bar here for the interstellar research, after sending five modules to two asteroids, you'll have like 199 or 197. You'll have really close to 200, but not quite enough for 200. If you send six research modules to this asteroid and this asteroid, then you'll bring back enough research after just two trips to get uh, 
all the way to hydrocarbon combustion. So if you only send enough for the research here, then you'll have to send out three steam rockets. And you want to switch away from steam rockets as soon as possible because they're just kind of a pain to set up. Now, this episode, I know I didn't get very much done. I was hoping to get further into space, but I've got uh, three and a half hours worth of footage I need to edit down to uh, 30 minutes. Uh, this was just kind of like an intermediate episode where we're doing a bunch of little things. Uh, next episode, for sure, we will be doing a lot of space stuff and refining more of this rocket silo build here. But that's all I have time for in this episode. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.